You have an exam coming up where you have to memorize a mountain of information. Your friend Michael studies four hours a day, and so do you. You both study the same content, use similar techniques, and you've gotten similar marks before. But this time, you end up remembering more of what you've learned and somehow scoring better than him on the final exam. Why? It's because you've implemented the tips by Stanford neuroscientist Andrew Huberman about how to memorize 10 times faster. But you forgot to tell your friend these study hacks. So this video is going to cover the most important practical lesson that I've learned from this two hour long podcast and how I tweaked it so I can study more effectively. We remember things that cause a huge emotional disturbance, which turns out to be due to a massive spike in adrenaline, the fight or flight signal. And I'm sure that you have those super embarrassing, sad, or really happy moments that you remember the exact details for. So maybe it was a time where you won a really big competition, a breakup, or losing out on a big opportunity, etc. Even though some of these events happened years ago, we still remember everything very clearly. And this is because of the emotional disturbance that these events cause. Now, I'm not saying you have to suffer some immense emotional trauma every time you want to learn something, but I am saying that we can leverage the chemical here, which is adrenaline, to help us remember things for longer and faster. And it makes logical sense. Adrenaline, as we mentioned, is the fight or flight signal. It's released when you're in dangerous situations. So if you're being a dumbass and you're driving without looking at other cars, your body is going to release a lot of adrenaline because it wants you to remember that situation so it doesn't happen again. And the opposite is true as well. For example, me in class doing textbook questions, like tell me with a straight face that you feel any emotion doing textbook questions like this. And that's why we either forget these things really quickly, or we have to use all these different techniques and all this time to really drill it in. Otherwise it's just gone. But Huberman actually talks about an interesting study where people were reading a textbook, so really boring information, and they dip their hands into like a bucket of cold water. And this causes the release of adrenaline because it's really cold. And this actually helped them remember the textbook information better, which I found really interesting. But the actionable step I took away is first, identify ways to increase adrenaline in practical ways. So dipping your hand in a cold bucket is not always practical. And second, how do we integrate that into our study routine? So the first part is identifying things that increase your adrenaline. So anything that increases your breathing or widens your eyes. So things like caffeine, cold showers and baths, as well as a quick run exercise, which elevates adrenaline even two hours after. Exercise is something that we probably do for most of the days. And apart from increasing adrenaline, it also has a lot of other benefits like increasing blood flow to the brain. And you can probably relate to this. Your brain is just much more clearer after an exercise session. And now with Huberman's research, I've deliberately changed how I structure my exercise timing. So for example, my day may look like study, exercise, study, and then shower. Studying and then exercising after is good because it helps you reinforce what you've just learned. And then studying after exercising is also good because your brain is more primed for information. And then you can throw in a cold shower if you want some extra adrenaline. So it's important not just what you do, but also the order in which you do certain things. If you're interested in some more study tips, here they are and take care.